Hello everyone. We are almost at the end of the book, The Lord of the Flies. We started some uh, last five months, almost. So this part of my video will explain you some of the themes that William Golding dealt with in the book, Lord of the Flies. Uh, and I'm sure that you are very much familiar with uh, the characters, uh, the happenings in the book, the background, the historical background of the book. And you have also learned about uh, the life and works of William Golding. So uh, before we sit for the you know, final test on uh, Lord of the Flies, I would like you to take a few notes on the themes I explain here in this video. Okay, the first of the themes that I explained in my last class with you, uh, it was good and evil. And that's, I also said that it, it, it's one of the most common themes that the writers of all ages, they uh, preferred to deal with because this is really universal, like good and evil, they, they don't stand together. So uh, in as far as the book Lord of the Flies is concerned, Ralph and Jack, they two uh, were the leaders of these two sides. If Ralph goes for good, Jack goes for evil. So, and as I said, that they two never stand together. So Ralph and Jack, they always had conflicts in the novel Lord of the Flies from the beginning till the end. Though initially, when they reached the island, uh, they were stranded on the island due to the Second World War. Uh, initially, we found both of them acting quite civilized because they, they had just been uh, there on the island from the city London which is believed to be one of the most civilized places in the world that time, even till today. So the second thing that I would like you to focus on is civilization and savagery. Like, uh, like good and evil, they are interrelated. Like when you talk about good versus evil, you actually talk about civilization versus savagery. Because when you are civilized, you are good. When you are a savage, you are evil. So they are linked, but still, as, as a theme, we have to find something, uh, some different explanations for this particular theme. Now, for the boys, civilization means their homes in Britain where, where they had food and shelter, uh, you know, all the comforts at home, you know, they, to the kids in the book, Lord of the Flies, the children, uh, to them, civilizations means you are in good dress, you eat good food, you stay in good places, and uh, you are in touch with good people, so you are in a civilized society. But when you go to savagery, uh, like, savagery is related to violence and cruelty. Like, they usually, uh, in a civilized society, you don't find uh, cruelty and violence much. Now, this is very much unlike to the condition that we see in our societies, the societies that we belong. In a city like Dhaka, in a country like Bangladesh, we find violences we find cruelties all around us like people killing uh, other people uh, you know brutally and uh, during broad delight they are murdering each other violence uh, is also very you know quite common uh, we have seen on the streets of dhaka uh, how a violence uh, you know happened uh, and to what extent we can actually go. Uh, even in some uh, countries like South American countries, uh, in some African countries, violence. Violence can also be 
could also be seen in uh, Myanmar when the Rakhine, uh, that group was mm, tortured brutally by their army and they all were sent to our country and uh, it, it was uh, perhaps a good decision or bad decision is yet to be decided but uh, our prime minister allowed them to stay in our country so forces of civilization in the book lord of the flies and forces of savagery in the book lord of the flies Similar to good and evil, we can find uh, the same characters. Those who are, as I said, those who are good, they are civilized. Or those who are civilized, they are good, supposed to be good. And those who are savages, they are not good, they are evil. So for the boys, civilization meant the comforts at home. So they were supposed to be no longer civilized in the island because they were not at home. They were not guided by their parents or teachers or adults. They were not getting uh, all the modern day comforts that they are used to get. So civilization from that sense, not the, I mean, the wilderness of the island, it's, it itself is uh, a savage thing for the boys coming from London. Because, uh, you know, you cannot be a Tarjan uh, wearing dresses with, uh, you know, green leaves uh, and uh, eating uh, raw fruits and raw meats uh, collected from the jungle. So you, you, you are living the life of a savage. Ralph, in particular, in, in the book Lord of the Flies, he wants to go back to civilization. And repeatedly, we have seen Ralph being homesick. He wanted to go back to uh, London, to his uh, country, to his parents, to his family, to his society. That's the reason you see Ralph repeatedly, he focused so much on the signal fire that from the very first meeting till the end, when uh, he was actually... Uh, he was actually been uh, uh, thrown out of the rest of the boys and uh, Ralph had to hide himself in the bushes to save his own life from the hands of Jack and the same Jack who killed or uh, Jack and his group who killed Simon and Piggy uh, who I mean the two persons the two kids who had always been constant companion of uh, Ralph. So the killing of Simon and Piggy gave Ralph that fear in him uh, to be killed by Jack again. Civilization also relates to a society that is democratic. Uh, initially, when the boys reached the island, we have seen him acting democratic, uh, they elected a leader, as an example, you must write it, they chose a leader, they elected, they voted for a leader. So it's, that's one of the first conditions of democracy, where people choose their leader by themselves. Uh, it's not forced. Now, obviously, Jack wasn't happy with that election when Ralph was elected as, as the leader. So the conflict started from there. So you are a part of civilization, but you became a savage. Why? Because you could not get that leadership or power you were looking for. Jack did not get that leadership, and that made him a savage. And that's where lies the basic rule of humanity, that if you cannot control yourself, your greed, your anger, your demand, then you become a savage. You are no longer a civilized person. And that's the basic difference between a civilized person and a savage person. Ralph, he also had savage instinct in him. But he, uh, yes, it's true. It should be admitted that he revealed that savage instinct as well. Taking part in that dance, taking part in the killing of Simon, taking part in uh, uh, in hunting a pig. 
So Ralph showed and exhibited his savage instinct. But in that case, Simon and Piggy, they both, even Piggy got himself involved uh, in, uh, in a savage act. But Simon was the only character. He was the only character in the book who remained, of course, I mean, other than few of the little ones, Simon was the only character who kept his anger, kept his, uh, you know, all desires. Even In fact, we found him very silent in the book. He seldom talked. But whenever he talked, he talked very wise and he talked the most important things. One of the things he made was that's the reason he is one of the most mm, civilized boys in i mean on the island uh, that it it was and the philosophy uh, he carried in him uh, when simon made that comment that it's uh, in uh, the beast is inside us like we all carry a beast within ourselves now those who can control that beast they remain human beings. And those who fail to control them, they become savages. Now, if you can control your greed, if you can control your lust, L-U-S-T, if you can control your um, um, yeah, emotions as well, strongly, then uh, if you can do all these, you are civilized, you are a human being, and you, you should be respected. But once you lose that control, you become a savage. You do all the bad things possible uh, to make your life and the lives of the others, uh, you know, by falling uh, the lives of the others in, in, in danger. Civilization also relates to a society, society that is democratic. Everyone has a right to speak and where there is some law and order. Ralph wanted that to happen on the island. Jack didn't. That's the reason, though Jack himself admitted in the opening chapter, or perhaps in the second chapter, that uh, they were English, and they were the best at everything, and they are the most civilized. That most civilized person, Jack, uh, turned into a complete savage when the book ends. So that's how the character developed uh, in, in the book, Lord of the Flies. Savagery is related to violence and cruelty, I just said, while Golding's message uh, is one of non-violence. Of course, Golding didn't want violence to happen everywhere, not even among the boys, but it happened. It happened. Golding portrayed the society. Golding wrote about the world politics. Golding, William Golding wrote about the features of society. We have seen people like Ralph and Jack among us. I mean, in the societies we belong, the readers of the book, Lord of the Flies. We, we meet them. We see them. We find all these people. Uh, civilized people in our societies. We find all these savages like Jack also in our societies, even sometimes in our families and in, in the close circle we all live in. So it's nothing new. They haven't fa fallen from the sky. William Golding talked about perhaps the American society, British society, uh, British society, and also, uh, you know, if you take this whole island as the whole world, in fact, that's what we all should do. William Golding portrayed the nature of the whole world. It's not about one country, one society, one person. It's about the whole world. In all the countries, in all the societies, in all the surroundings, we find people like this. We find savages like this. And uh, that's where the theme of civilization and savagery ends. The very last, I mean, the next theme I have to explain you is uh, you must take few notes if possible whenever you listen to a lecture like this. 
innocence and corruption. That's the theme title. Innocence and corruption. Innocence is linked to goodness. Same, as I said earlier, that all these themes are linked, interlinked. I mean, uh, you can explain the same thing, naming three different themes. The, the next theme is innocence and corruption. Innocence is linked to goodness and being unaware of the bad side of human nature. Like if you are unaware of the bad sides of human nature, you are actually innocent. Like you are, you yet you don't know when a person becomes bad or what makes a person bad. When you don't know this, then you are innocent. And it's through corruption and it's through ages you learn to be corrupt. You no longer become, uh, you no longer remain an innocent person anymore. That's the reason kids are innocent, innocent all the time, and adults are corrupted. Because when you are innocent, when you are a kid, you are a child, you are yet to know what are the bad sides of human nature. Now, when do you learn the bad sides of human nature when you are not taught what are the good things and these are the bad things that human nature can carry now once they were not guided by their parents by their adults when due to the second world war when they had to leave their home and when they had to stay in an island which is uninhabited and when it was all themselves there present, when they had to build a society, a civilization of their own, then they started becoming corrupt day by day. It is the innocence of the boys that made the island at first looks like a paradise. When they reached, if you notice the way they jumped, the way they expanded, expressed their uh, excitement, uh, the way they swam, they showed their jubilant that yes, we have made it, we are free now, we will be able to live our life freely for a few days. That excitement gets polluted day by day and you start feeling homesick, you start feeling uh, going back to your original land. Okay. It is the innocence of the boys that made the island at first seem like paradise. They want to have fun and adventure. Uh, you know, initially when they reached the island, they acted like they were having fun. They, they were actually having fun. They were not acting. I'm sorry for that. And they were having an adventure. They thought it would be quite an adventure living without parents and living in an island. And gradually, if it, it seems as if this innocence is lost uh, gradually. For example, Ralph seems hopeful at the beginning of the story, but he realizes how hard it is to be a responsible leader, a caring leader. Uh, I mean, he started with a lot of spirit, he wanted to make it a good island. He wanted to make that place a livable place. He wanted to be united. He wanted to create something through which they could go back to their own homes and comforts. But he gradually knew that it was not easy to be a true leader. We see the same thing in world politics, in your uh, country politics, that it's not easy to be a good politician, a good person. You have, to, uh, you have to face a lot of difficulties while doing all these, uh, you know, remaining good or not becoming bad. Even he acts violently 
At some time, we found Ralph acting violently, taking part, I mentioned though, taking part in killing a pig, taking part in the killing of Simon. Uh, they too are the most, the worst examples of Ralph uh, getting involved in savage activities. When he attacks the pig, if you notice the few very little details that William Golding mentioned in the book, Lord of the Flies, like he was excited that he was going to kill an animal. You know, this is really savage that when you do something bad and you do that bad thing with a lot of pride and excitement, I am going to kill you. And if you are excited to kill somebody, you are not a human being. You are a complete savage. And that's what we see even in temporary, contemporary societies. The society, every day you see such news. Like you become excited to do something bad, to kill someone, to kill something. Uh, you know, same goes for to, uh, to do bad things, any bad thing. Ralph seems hopeful at the beginning of the story, but he realizes how hard it is to be a responsible leader. By the end of the novel, he weeps for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's art. The very last chapter of the book, in chapter 12, you will find at the very end of the book, I don't want to be a spoiler, I want you to read that part of the book, but one statement that I quote uh, from Ralph, he said, I mean, he was feeling uh, bad for the end of innocence on the island because they all lost innocence. Because when they were innocent, they were good. And that innocence was lost gradually. And they turned into complete savages when the book ends. And that's where he, you know, that statement by Simon that the beast is within us. What is that beast? The evil nature in human beings. Uh, the, the evil instinct in us. So that was, you know, so strong that it killed the innocence in us. We, we carry innocence too, but that innocence was lost. Uh, and the savage instinct took over. And corruption... Innocence and corruption, so far we talked about innocence. And the corruption is, it refers to the temptation to act in a way that is not good. For example, refusing to act for the good of the group or society as a whole creates corruption. When you are not ready to take part in a group or team to act properly, to act as a, as a group, as a part of a group or a team, to do good for others. The way Ralph, Piggy and Simon initially, they, uh, you know, they, they, they got themselves engaged in activities like plucking fruits from the trees for the little ones, building huts for all the people, and uh, collecting fruits for others, trying to... Uh, trying to uh, maintain law and order and discipline, creating laws and rules. Now, these are uh, the elements of goodness we notice among Ralph, Piggy, Simon, and almost even Jack uh, was concerned about uh, the boy's hunger. So he was also desperate to look for Mm, foods for the kids. Yes, of course, he used this as a tool to grab power from Ralph, but he got himself engaged uh, in, in a positive way. He got himself engaged in some good works like this, that yeah, food was also a basic need for the kids. So he wanted desperately some foods for the kids. So even if it is a tool to get some power, it was a good act. 